here we are at the tail end of the nastiest campaign anybody can remember and on the eve of perhaps the most consequential election of our lifetimes. With the polls showing a tight race, it all comes down to getting out the vote. But how do you actually do that? We are on the ground tonight with both sides in our series Inside the Final 30. Here's ABC's David Wright. Dixville Notch, New Hampshire, first to vote in primary season and first today. <laughs> this time tomorrow, we'll all have followed suit. Our long national nightmare over. We don't have to accept a dark and divisive vision for America. Maybe. We're winning Ohio. We're winning Iowa. We're winning, we think, New Hampshire. Tonight, the candidates are crisscrossing the country. Our team's along for the ride. We're doing Pittsburgh right now, then Grand Rapids, Michigan, then Philadelphia, and then North Carolina. We're here in Raleigh, North Carolina, about to walk into our second rally of the day. Here we go. The campaign's making their case in the states that they hope will put them over the top. This is our final day on the campaign plane. We just boarded this morning, and we're all getting kind of nostalgic here. Sad. One final sprint to the finish, and a chance to get in some last licks. She's a cheat. She is a cheat. She never reported it. She's a cheat. True to form, this race brought last-minute surprises down to the wire, including one final twist to the FBI's review of Hillary Clinton's emails. The FBI sent a letter to Congress. It said it had reviewed a large number of emails and, quote, based on our review, we have not changed our conclusions that we expressed in July with respect to Secretary Clinton. In other words, remember that email investigation we reopened? Never mind about that. Trump is now back to his old complaint. It's a totally rigged system. I've been saying it for a long time. You can't review 650,000 new emails in eight days. Our sources are telling us at ABC, the FBI used computer programs and found that the emails between Huma, Abedin, and Hillary Clinton were duplicates. Now, it's all down to the ground game. Hi, uh, I am looking for Teresa Diaz. Convincing the voters to do their part. In Phoenix, Andrew Neistat has spent the past month knocking on doors, and he was out today. I took a few days off work so I could just focus on this. If there's no answer, he leaves his calling card. Being the last day, every second is precious, so you can't wait around too long for him to come to the door, you know? Others are manning the phones. Hi, my name's Diana. I'm a volunteer with the Arizona Republican Party. How are you today? Diana Breast cheerfully rallies the troops. Are you voting Republican? Yes, vote Trump. Make America great. Oh, thank you. Spread the word. That checklist, all the Trump votes she's logged today. Over 200. You're a busy woman. Okay. Are you convincing them? Yes. Some of them don't even know election day is tomorrow. What? Yes. Can you believe that? That's shocking. Douglas Gregory is having trouble keeping his emotions in check. It's for my grandchildren. <laughs> my family. Oh, wow. You feel that strongly? Oh, do I. We have been abused, I'm telling you. The stakes are that high for him. Campaigning is only part of how you win an election. The get out the vote operation, the door knocking, and on election day, having the machine on the ground to give rides to voters who may need it, that's traditionally how these races are won or lost in those critical battleground states. In New York City this weekend, a road trip for dozens of Clinton volunteers. New York is solidly blue. I signed up over there. Packed onto a bus, foot soldiers in this ground war. Not memorize it word for word, but just know what I'm saying. I wanted to make sure we count on your vote for Hillary Clinton. All right, let's do it. That's Chris Danner and Kelly Stewart. They're not from Philly. Good We're out here from the Hillary campaign. Um, yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yes. That's the first question. Checking in with everyone, uh, making sure that they're all set for Tuesday. They don't get to vote in a battleground, but they're hoping <laughs> to make a difference by showing up here. 
there's nothing really to do in New York right now. I mean, other than sit on your phone and stress out and freak out. Here, there's a ground game and the votes matter. Up that way? There, two blocks to the left. It's one of those moments in your life where something big is going on and you want to be a part of it. Down in North Carolina, a different brand ride along. Roll the Trump train, baby. These folks are with the Great America Pack. Florida's going to be close, but he's going to take it. Yeah. They call themselves Donald Trump dignitaries. There's Jesse Jane Duff, a retired U.S. Marine Corps gunnery sergeant. We know she's, he's going to win. There's no doubt. America's fed up that Clintons are the past and Trump is the future. This is actually Ty's watch. Dorothy Woods, widow of a Navy SEAL killed in Benghazi. And I hope that they will take my experience and, and make their own decision about why she cannot be commander in chief. And David Clark Jr., a sheriff in Milwaukee County. Donald Trump's not beholden to anybody. When he goes to Washington, D.C., he's not going to owe anybody anything. It's not always a friendly reaction they get. That Mercedes right there, two up. He just shot me a bird out his window, out his, out his uh, sunroof. There you go, some thumbs up right there. The group rocks up to Clemens, North Carolina. Trump, 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 Trump. All those people gathered for an event where the Trump dignitaries are the featured attraction. We gotta push hard now to get Trump across the finish line. The enthusiasm here, palpable. The dignitaries sign autographs. Do you like my hat? I love your hat. And you even look better in it. And give smooches to Trump supporters anything to get out the vote. Everyone excited for Tuesday? Inside the event, one of our new friends turns on us. People are learning to rely on things other than just ABC, NBC, and CBS. And I really don't want to make my friend from ABC feel uncomfortable, but the fact is the country is changing and the tide is turning. Crowd is certainly turning on our producer. And enjoy it and relish it and know. But as we get back on the bus, we're all friends again. And when I come here, it just touches my heart to see such enthusiasm. This long journey is almost over now for the candidates, too. Tonight on his plane, Mike Pence was wistful. When I think of uh, this journey, I think of long days and short runways. <laughs> but by God's grace, uh, we're coming to the end of an extraordinary experience. But will the nation be happy where we end up? Back in Arizona, Andrew Neistat has a few more doors exactly. to knock on. Do you feel like this is a big turning point I in do. your country? Yeah, I really do. Either way? Yeah, it's a huge turning point. This is like uh, 1776 or the Civil War or something you know, along that magnitude. I'm not saying that the world's going to explode tomorrow or anything, but um, the, the ramifications of tomorrow will definitely be felt for a long time either way. Tonight in Dixville Notch, they've already counted the early returns. This time tomorrow, everyone else will have their say. I'm David Wright for Nightline in Phoenix.